I have my computer back, I have the editing program back, and it's better, it's stronger, it's faster. Love it. And she's not as cranky anymore because she's got her computer back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to everybody. Um, we do want to warn you, um, this may not be, um, there's a few scenes later on that uh, you may not want your young children watching. Um, could be PG, you know, because we know young yeah. children watch, you know. So we'll let you watch it first and decide if you want to let your kids watch it or not. So I'll, first we want to give a shout out to Hannah. She sent us the word abracadabra, and as you notice from the opening scene yeah. and theme song, that that is what we're going to kind of be going the theme with on this yes. one. So thank you, Hannah. There, and There seems to be a lot of um, <clears throat> mysteries revolving around whether this is an Aramaic word or a Hebrew, Hebrew word, but the general consensus seems to be that I create what I speak. Um, if you want to argue the point, go do your research and argue it on someone else's YouTube channel because we're not going to argue this because we're yeah. just using this for the sake of um, sake of argument, I guess. For a theme. Because yeah. really, what, when you think about it, if, when you think of the term, I create what I speak, this is what magicians do. They say... It's what Watchtower well, does. Yeah, it's what Watchtower does. They actually create what they're speaking, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But like you saw the opening scenes, you know, we took out the audio, but... You know, Rocky says, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Well, in the real world, the magician would pull a rabbit out of his hat. So he's actually creating what he's speaking. And this is where we're going with this particular video because over the years and decades, Watchtower Watch has created a whole lot of what they've spoken. And as we know now... It's, well, it's all bullshit is what it all is. <laughs> yeah. And we also want to thank Evie. For those of you who have not seen her Guardians of Doctrine G.O.D. video, you know, go check it out. It's really good. Great job, Evie. And for her commenter down, uh, Dulcina Swanson, thank you. And for everybody else, you know, who came up with the G.O.D. Well, that's the thing, you know. There's a new God in town. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, is for, for a number of years, we've all watched this governing body, you know, grab more power from the publishing company because, well, in fact, just this past week's Watchtower study, they talked about how it was clearly defined, you know, that the governing body was in control uh, however it was that they worded it, because go back and watch our last video. We actually did a video on that. But it but it really shows how Watchtower's governing body is moving themselves into the position of God. Not just by saying fancy things like um, <clears throat> Guardians of Doctrine, because that's just an acronym. You know, when you think about COP, the acronym COP, it's Company Owned Police. IRS, Eternal Revenue Service, CIA. FBI. We live every day with acronyms and I guarantee you it ain't going to be too much longer now to when everybody is going to refer to the governing body as God. Instead of guardians of doctrine, they're going to say God well, because it's already? easier. Well, I, well, I yeah. mean, really, you know, I mean, isn't isn't it easier to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to call the FBI today <clears throat> instead of saying, well, I'm going to call the Federal Bureau of Investigation because we're all conditioned to use acronyms. So now, instead of we're gonna somebody call God saying, today. <laughs> well, I'm going to call God today. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. But um, there's been a lot of other things that they've spoken and then later created. Yeah, abracadabra. Abracadabra. So, why don't we play the clip? Um, there have been some that did not know that Jeffrey Jackson in his testimony even said Guardians of Doctrine. So why don't we play that clip first? Okay. Uh, but the qualifications uh, of a member for the governing body involves someone who is considered an anointed witness uh, who has worked uh, in scriptural, uh, with a scriptural background, either as a missionary or a full-time servant for many years, and is able to fulfill the role of the governing body, which is, and may I state, uh, a, a, group, a spiritual group of men 
who are the guardians of our doctrine. Abracadabra! Guardians of doctrine. We are God. And what's interesting is the other day when I was looking for this clip, um, I had never heard that phrase before. You know, I was been raised a witness almost my entire I've life. I've never heard that. And we try to keep up on all the latest stuff that is in the JW world. So we had never heard that phrase before. No, the only thing that we heard continuously was new light, new light, yeah. new light. Yeah. Yeah. Never heard guardians. Well, actually, we, we've we never heard Watchtower say guardians of anything, actually. Yeah. And so I went to my Watchtower Library CD-ROM, couldn't find it in there. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm going to have to go to JW.org. So I went to JW.org, and that particular phrase did not come up at all. But the word guardian did. And there's a whole list of, you know, articles and scriptures and everything. But about, oh, I'd say about ten down, items down, there was a scripture and something about that caught my eye, so I just looked it up. Now, I am going to be using the same Bible they do. And it was Galatians 3, 23 through 25. Now, this shocked me when I read this. Now, keep in mind, as Kim's reading, that this is another one of these abracadabra moments. Because, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we all grew up with the mind concept that you cannot understand the Bible without the faithful and, sh and discreet slave to teach you. Remember Jehovah's Witnesses? Yeah. We've heard that time and you cannot understand the Bible without their help. So if they are going to start using this phrase that they're guardians of doctrine for themselves, this is what I have yeah, to say. In they've reply. already started using the word. Yeah. Galatians 3, 23 through 25. However, before the faith arrived, we were being guarded under law, being handed over into custody, looking to the faith that was about to be revealed. So the law became our guardian, leading to Christ, so that we might be declared righteous through faith. So this is talking about Christ. 25. But now that the faith has arrived, we are no longer under a guardian. <laughs> So how can they be guardians of doctrine when this clearly gives us our freedom that we are not under any guardian? <laughs> well, that's it. Galatians 3, what, 23? Yeah. See? Now, the interesting thing is, is they've changed a few of the words in that scripture. I'm just going to go down to verse 25. But now that the faith has arrived, we are no longer under a tutor. See? So, so Watchtower <laughs> watch has changed the word from tutor to guardian, which now is beginning to play into there. We are guardians of doctrine. See, now that word guardian is starting to appear in certain key scriptures, or at least in that particular scripture. Yeah. So do we want to show a few abracadabra well, let's moments? Let's do a few abracadabra things right, right here. Okay. Oh, okay. Here comes Tony Morris. Abracadabra. One classic example of that is found in John 15, 20, and 21. If you have your Bible at hand, please open to John 15, 20, and 21. He said, Keep in mind the word I said to you, a slave is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have observed my word, they will also observe yours. But they will do all these things against you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. It's difficult to misconstrue those words, isn't it? Jesus said, persecution is going to happen. So you mean like this? Abracadabra! Wait, wait, wait. 
Wrong one! Abracadabra! So why don't the Watchtower do something for him rather than giving out right, their leaflets? I'm actually gonna these, like, end this conversation now. Actually. These leaflets. Like, you think you're here to attack me? I'm not. Really, Tony? Is that the type of persecution you were referring to, to where nobody's even physically being touched, but yet mentally, you've created what you've spoken? See, there is no persecution against Jehovah's Witnesses and Watchtower because you're creating an illusion. What we showed earlier was the physical persecution that Christ endured, yeah. according to Scripture. But now you speak Jehovah's Witnesses are being persecuted, and you give the illusion that you're being persecuted. Well, I will admit that Witnesses have been persecuted, but most of it is brought on by headquarters. Well, that's there's the illusion. See, in like the early days... Like pulling a rabbit out of your hat. Yeah, like in the early days, you know, Rutherford created the illusion that Jehovah's Witnesses were God's chosen people because we're being persecuted. So what's he do? He sits in his little office and he writes out a little phrase, oh, religion is a snare and a racket. And then somebody in the background says, oh, that's hot. And it immediately invoked persecution. Well, don't but forget that he was antagonizing Hitler, well, too. that's the thing. <laughs> this persecution that they think that they're receiving is abracadabra. It's what they've created because they spoke it. They have to keep the facade going on. So, abracadabra. Abracadabra. Critical thinking. Now, we find it funny that when you read Watchtower's literature over the years, they manage to equate independent thinking along with Satan. See? Yeah. But in contrast, Hebrews 5.14 says something different. But I'm going to read it from the rusty sword first. Because abracadabra, they changed again. Hebrews 5.14 But solid food belongs to mature people. To those, um, to those who through use have their perceptive powers trained to distinguish both right and wrong. And that's one of the sleight of hand or, you know, pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Abracadabra. Yeah, is they, uh, as witnesses, you honestly believe that your perceptive powers are trained. Are trained. And you can discern things. What's interesting is out of their new Bible, that same verse says, But solid food belongs to mature people, to those who through use, through use, have their powers of discernment trained to distinguish both right and wrong. So now it's the powers of discernment. discernment. Well, here's something for you to discern, Jehovah's Witnesses. See, Watchtower equates independent thinking or critical thinking with satanic thinking. But if God gave us a brain, this incredible mechanism we have up here to discern for ourselves what's right and wrong, then why do we allow men like, you know, God, <laughs> the guardians, the of, guardians doctrine. of doctrine, to shut down our thinking abilities? See, independent thinking is satanic, but yet this scripture said that mature people would train their perceptive power. Through so, use. Through use. So you've got to use you've it. You've got to use your thinking ability. For a really good example, in 1961, Watchtower printed in that blood booklet that taking blood fractions was against God's law. But yet, in November 2006, the Kingdom Ministry had an insert saying that taking blood fractions is now a conscience matter. So, if Watchtower is directed by God's Holy Spirit as they claim, then your critical thinking, your perceptive powers should start being used. Wait a minute. If this organization is being guided by God's Holy Spirit and they flip-flopped on the blood fraction, then who's responsible for those lost lives from 1961 to 2006? Is it God or is it Watchtower? That's how you train your perceptive powers to distinguish between right and wrong. Don't let Watchtower come along and say, Abracadabra! If you think independently, you're choosing the side of Satan. Yeah. It don't work. Or abracadabra. 
I'm not even going to watch the Jeffrey Jackson testimony because I don't know where that's from and if that's really him and I don't watch that kind of crap and if it's on, not on JW.org, I don't want to watch it. Well, here's another good abracadabra moment. Remember when was it uh, ABC when they did the interview with Barbara Anderson? Dateline, yeah. Dateline? What was that? I mean, how many years? That was a lot of years 2002, ago. 2002, 2003? A lot of years ago. So Watchtower comes on and goes, Abracadabra, don't watch this show because it's put on by apostates telling lies. And now, Abracadabra, you got Jeffrey Jackson in front of the Royal Commission saying, guess what? It appears our elders are abusing children. So Abracadabra, Jehovah's Witnesses, who lied? Well, I've got to say is... I don't know about anybody else, but editing skills of apostates aren't that good to where they can take Jeffrey yeah. Jackson and put him in, you know, this committee hearing and put these words that sound exactly like him in his mouth. I mean, yeah, exactly. for this to be apostate, you know, creation and stuff, it's like, wow, you know, I hate to say it, but they have no discernment whatsoever and they're not using their power of discernment well see but isn't that why the bible has so many warnings abracadabra do not be misled many will come on the basis of my saying hey he's in the wilderness i am he the appointed time has arrived abracadabra watchtower creates what they speak. See? The yep. end. Jesus, Jesus appeared or Jesus returned in 1914. And when the end of the world didn't come like they thought, oh, 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 that was an invisible return. So and then that generation. An yeah, that was that was Slide an illusion. illusion. <laughs> exactly. This generation will not pass away until all these things occurred. Abracadabra! That generation's gone, Watchtower, so now you're having to do a September 2015 broadcast talking again, explaining how the overlapping generations work. Because guess what? When you first brought that nonsense to the board, abracadabra, nobody could see the illusion. And they still can't figure it out because it yes. doesn't make sense. So we hope you all have a great weekend and love to everybody. And welcome to our new subscribers and hello to our friends and new view or uh, and old new and old viewers all of our viewers getting tongue twisted here i know it <laughs> um but we also want to um give a couple of shout outs for those of you who are interested uh, mark and cora have their parliament day coming up for october 2nd you know for those of you in the uk who are able to join i wish we could go and just yeah. get our bullhorn and be right there with all of you so we send our love and we'll be there in spirit with you Absolutely. guys yes and then uh, i also want to thank joanne for calling me and letting me know that several of people she knows in congregations uh they're leaving they're leaving a lot of these people abracadabra abracadabra <laughs> the kingdom halls are half full yeah. but yet they need new ones abracadabra yeah. yeah i create what i speak yeah exactly and also um for those of you we keep forgetting to mention this but mark and cora came up with a wonderful idea um, where everyone can tell their story about the uh, Watchtower Victims uh, Library. And that page is on our website. You know, we're hosting that for them. Watchtower.exposed. Yes, and I will put the link to this down below in the description. So you just have to click on that and then just go down and just write your story, you know, and just keep it anonymous if you want. You know, you don't have to use your full name or anything. So we want to thank Mark and Cora for that wonderful idea, and already several yeah, we have, have put several their stories. There already, yes. Yeah. So if you haven't read some of these abuse stories, you know, thank you everyone for sharing that. It just breaks your heart to read some of these, you know. So like I said, we'll put the link down below, and uh, I think that's it for right now. Did I forget anything? Uh, I don't think so. Yes. So I'm going to take my magic wand here. <laughs> Yeah. And we're going to show of how they really do pull a rabbit out of its hat, out of the hat. Bye. He reaches into his hat and... Presto.
little white bunny. Here's how it's done. First, a very small rabbit is carefully placed inside a specially designed black handkerchief. Don't worry, the rabbit is perfectly comfortable. It is in no danger of being harmed. The handkerchief is then hung behind the magician's table. If you're wondering, the reason why magicians work with rabbits instead of cats or other small animals is that rabbits naturally sit still. When the magician picks up the hat, he also picks up the rabbit and puts it inside. Take another look in slow motion. The hat goes up and in goes the rabbit. Now watch again and see if you can spot when the rabbit is put inside the hat. Did you see it? The magician reaches inside the concealed handkerchief and releases the rabbit. And there you have it. Just that simple. I hear the magic in your eyes Just when I think I'm wrong.